Hello, this is Eric Bobro, and in this ARCHICAD video tutorial, I'll show you how to work with the new stair and railing tools in ARCHICAD 21 and later versions to create custom stairs to suit your needs. In this case, spiral stair with a custom tread shape, unique balusters and newel posts, and full control over the plan symbol for the numbering and the walking line and the description, etc., to suit your needs. If you'd like to become a master of the new stairs and railings, I invite you to join me for my ARCHICAD stairs and railings course. You'll find full information on the page here near this video, as well as on bobro.com forward slash stairs. Now this particular project that we're looking at came from Steve Nickel, an architect in Colorado, who does beautiful mountain homes. We'll see this, how beautifully crafted it is, intricate design, and really beautifully modeled with terrain modeling here. Now, before we go into the stair, let's take a look at how he got the background to look so natural. Well, it turns out it's actually a picture, a texture created into a custom uh, surface that's applied to a curved wall. And you can see here's another one there. Steve also works with things like the morph tool to create rock outcroppings as well as intelligently using standard library parts like this car or this tree to set up the context for the project. Now in this particular project he had a beautiful let's see go in here we'll just jump in here we can see this spiral stair. Lots of beautiful woodwork, custom designed um, everywhere. Now when we look at this stair here, it looks pretty good. In fact, Steve does such a great job with detail. Check out this Neutra uh, book here and the flowers and, and the, how the table is set. Now when he sent this to me and said, can we do any better than this with a new stair and railing tool? I said, Steve, it looks great. You know, I can see you've got some custom treads there. Yeah, what, what's going on? What do you need? And he said, well, look at it a little closer. And he pointed out that the railing here the, was made out of an ARCHICAD 20 uh, element and it doesn't pay attention to the treads. It just passes right through that. Now, uh, you might not notice it at first, but definitely it doesn't look correct. Um, in addition, you know, this railing up here is just a, a rectangular form and the wood grain doesn't look uh, correct. He says, can you do any better than that? I said, well, let me, let me see what I can do. So uh, I've spent some time reworking it and you'll see that we've been able to get this so that it really does work with the new stair and railing tool. Um, you'll see it come up in just a moment with uh, the balusters uh, resting on top of the treads. This is actually a uh, stair and this is actually a railing um, here using these new tools. So how can you get control over these things the way I just did and create your own stairs and railings with your own custom treads, balusters, newel posts, etc. That's what we're going to cover in today's tutorial. So let's get started. We're going to take a look at the floor plan here of the project and zoom in on the area of the spiral stair. And we'll talk a little bit about the geometry of the design. So this is going from a uh, story to story of 10 foot six. And based on uh, the design, we have 13 uh, steps up each one nine inches, and then the 14th step takes one to the next story. Um, so there are, each of these is 30 degrees, so it goes 360 plus an extra 30, so 390. And that in itself was an issue because when I tried to create a spiral stair that went past 360, ARCHICAD refused. So let's take a look at the geometry and start building this up from scratch. Uh, the, um, the central post here is three inches with a quarter inch veneer. So three plus a quarter on either side is three and a half. And the shape of the actual stair, it's five feet across to meet code requirements. So if I go to the um, this area here, we're gonna actually build this up um, from scratch and I'll show you every step along the way. So I'm gonna take this column and just put it up 
in this um, area. That's the central column. The, the column here is three inches in diameter plus a quarter inch veneer, so three and a quarter or three and a half going from side to side. Now, in order to design this, we need to, of course, know our geometry. So the stair meeting code is two foot six in um, radius, five feet. Uh, that's sort of the minimum, I guess, that would meet code. And it has a walking line, or I'm sorry, it has the, the treads and the width of the staircase go from this post to the end here. You can see that's two foot four and a quarter. Now the center point here is where we're going to measure the walking line. Now with standard straight stairs, the walking line goes is the run of each step or the going distance of the step. And it's very simple to measure. It's you know the distance from one tread to the next. But in a spiral one, you have to measure it on an angle or not uh, on, a, on an arc. So let's see how we can measure that. I'm going to go to the arc tool and we'll do another arc here. But I'm going to find that midpoint right here and take this 30 degrees. I'm also going to do the same thing for the railing, which this is two foot six. I'm going to take it back to say two foot four and a half um, here. And then again, go 30 degrees. So that's the length for the railing from where it meets one tread to where it meets the next one. And we'll be using that distance um, in actually specifying the railing. Now, in order to have the correct distances, I'm going to go to the dimension tool and set it up to measure arc length rather than linear uh, length. And I've set it up for a rather small font size so that we can see it and put the text underneath the line. So when I click here, it's picking the, both points of the arc. Double click to say I don't have anything else. And I'll just put it right back on top of that arc. And we can see that's the distance for this one. I'll click, double click anywhere, and then go back to this. And you can see this is the length that we're going to be referencing for the railing. Now that we've got our basic geometry um, here defined, I'll go into the stair tool. Now, in order to start with sort of just something that would be similar to what you might have, I'm going to use a favorite, the simple concrete stair. And let's just take a look at that for just a moment. I'm going to go along here, click a couple of times. It creates a stair that goes from uh, one uh, story to the next. And if we look in 3D at this, we'll see what it's got. Now, in order to convert this, and I'm, I'm not going to convert this one. By the way, I could go here and actually curve this like that. And then we'll say, what does that do? So Archicad does a pretty good job um, on that. But uh, it's going to be easier to actually define this, to draw it from scratch, because I, I want to be able to control the radius very precisely. So let's just go in here and we'll draw this new stair. Uh, so if I go to the stair tool, we need to define some of the parameters uh, to be able to do this. Now, as I said, we need to change it from going from story to story, where it's the spiral stair would go over 360 and it just Archicad will refuse to do that. I'm going to say instead of not linked, which would mean I'd have to tell it the, the upper height, whatever that is, I'm going to say flexible. So that way, as I draw it, it will just put as many treads as I allow it to in terms of my sweep from when I start to finish on this. Now, the width of the stair, as I mentioned, is two foot four and a quarter. The rise, we need to make it nine inches. Now, when I try to do nine inches, it will refuse because the rules that are in here that came from that favorite had a maximum of seven inches. If I uncheck that, then I can set it to nine inches. Now, the distance for the run or the going length is locked, but I need to fix this to a different value. It's going to be the eight and five sixteenths, so eight and five sixteenths inches. And to make it simple for thinking about the geometry, I'm just going to say make the um, treads have a vertical relationship rather than overlapping. Uh, we will actually end up with a, a little bit 
effectively of a nosing on the stair, but we're not going to do it through this geometry. We're going to do it through the custom tread that we create. Now, as I'm drawing this, I'm going to be going up and around this way, counterclockwise, so I want to make the baseline be on the outside and the width of the stair going to the left as I go up. Now, the stair will have no structure because it's just going to be made up of finish treads. So I'm going to say here, let's do the treads. Now, in order to set up the treads, I'll say, let's just use the built-in tread for now because I'm going to be customizing this anyway. And we'll take this at, you know, let's say a two inch uh, thickness. Uh, because Steve has a different template, the building material that was built into this is, is not available. So I'll just go in and, and choose, choose one here. But I'm going to use the a material that is actually what he was using so that it'll look quite similar in terms of just the top surface of the tread. So I think we've now got this with a, the right geometry, no structure, and with the finish being treads of the right material and approximately the, well, some, something uh, representative of the thickness. So I'll say OK. And I will now go click to start this stair. And you can see it'll do as many steps as I give it space for because I told it to be flexible. I want to do it in a spiral. So I'm going to choose this that says click on the arc point and now take it around. So I'll take this around. Now if I try to take it up, here is where it goes. And you can see it starts over. And if I go back here, it's, um, it's actually going to have a little bit of a hard time. So let's just take this again. Um, again with the arc around and we'll take this. I'm just going to take it to nine, um, nine pieces here uh, and I'll just click twice to say that's all I want. Now we're going to clean up the uh, plan representation later, but let's move on and create another piece that goes up the extra four steps. So I'll start this here. Again, do the arc option. Um, let's see. Here. Sometimes you have to just carefully make sure that you get this before um, it, the palette moves away. And here I've got now the four risers and we're starting up on the fifth one here. And you can see that this has got, it says five risers, it's four uh, treads. Now if I look at this in 3D here, we'll see that it's got two sets of steps. One was the longer one with nine and this one with just the four treads. Now I need to take this up to where it would continue uh, here. Now I found that sometimes I can snap to this point here and sometimes I can't. So I'm just going to grab it from here and say that I'd like to move this whole thing up till it's in line with this here. But I actually want to go a little bit further. This says six feet. So I'm going to say six feet nine and say enter and that will take it up to the proper height and now we have a real spiral staircase um, and Archicad's done a decent job of just fitting this around the post there but of course it's we're going to be making a, a custom tread as I showed um, earlier but let's focus now on just getting a railing on there I'll go to the railing tool and we'll pick up a simple balustrade favorite so that we have something that we know um, to start out with. I'll go to the corner where the first stair starts and when it highlights it, I know I'm associating this railing with the stair. Now I don't have to actually do the arc and in fact it's best if I just simply click on, go to the end point here. Actually let's take this here. Um, so when I do this, it'll actually associate the with the arc of the stair. Now I could finish there, but I actually want to take it up all the way to the top, which is going to be this stair here. And I'll click and then I'll click one more time to finish. Now you'll see that it did follow the curve of the first stair, but because it was finishing on one stair and then going on to the next, it didn't quite do the curve. But that's not a problem. If I select it, you can see this um, straight segment here. I can literally go and say I want to arc it. 
and just snap it into position. And then let's see what it looks like in 3D. You can see how it's done a remarkably good job as a first approximation. It's following each one. The, um, the balusters are resting neatly on each tread. Um, and aside from there being an extra post here, and of course it not following the actual design style, um, it's pretty close to what we want. So let's see how we go and um, adjust it. First thing I'm going to do is something a little subtle, because you might not have noticed that there are three treads here and four, or I'm sorry, three balusters, and then there are four, etc. What I want to do is make sure that there are an even number of balusters for each tread, and that's why I measured the uh, arc length along the tread there. And I need to set it to uh, have a pattern that would be just as long as that tread length, and then tell the balusters to subdivide. So here's how we're going to do that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go in here and make sure that this setting is for the right distance. So when we go to the segment, and actually overall, I'll just say that I know that it's supposed to be two foot eight here for the top, and this handrail up, that happens to be up here, uh, I'm going to set it also at two foot eight. And that um, if we uh, do that, plus one more thing, which is to make the offset one and a half inches um, here, we're going to have something more closely, uh, close to the uh, way that Steve designed it. And you can see how that pulled it out to the right um, distance there. Let's go now to um, 3D and see what we've got. You'll see how it pulled the uh, railing down to the new lower height, um, and it took it a little bit closer out to the edge, which is what I want. Now that I've got that basic geometry, I'm going to use this number here. We'll just sort of slide this over so that I can keep that in mind, and I'll select the railing, and we'll go in to set up the pattern. So the pattern, in terms of balusters, we can say the balusters are a certain distance apart. And perhaps if I divided this odd number in three, it might work pretty well. But for a variety of reasons, I think that the, creating an inner post every tread, once every tread, is going to give us more controls. So what I need to do is specify the length here for this. Actually, I have to click with a plus and drag one in. And then it places it sort of arbitrarily at a certain location, and I can type in the 1 foot 2 and 59 60 fourths here, and that's going to reposition it to that distance. Now having done that here, and, and let's just say that the segment top is uh, 3 inches below, and you can see this will pull it down here. Now, by the way, the preview here is not quite looking correct because the handrail is profiled and it's actually going down from the reference line. Uh, but as long as I have the uh, posts, the built-in posts and the balusters matching their, the offset, they'll be in line with each other, and I just need to make sure that coordinates with whatever shape the railing is. Now the balusters here, we could say that they're every four inches, but really what I'd like to do is say that there are a certain number of them, for example, three, or divide the distance from beginning to the, the pattern into three pieces. Now having done that, we should see that if we go and look in 3D, a subtle change. Oh, well, we forgot one more thing here that um, is a little confusing. In the segments, I need to make sure that this, I tell it to use that pattern length and to start it in general, on the left side. Now, this er, the, these things are not even, you can't even select anything if you don't have inner posts. As soon as you put in an inner post, you have to check on this and say where that pattern um, is. So we'll say uh, that's going to be a specific distance. And now we'll have the balusters. And you can see that there's three on every one. They're all carefully aligned. If we zoom in on this, you can see that this one is splitting the line here very, very precisely. And you can see, if you look closely, that 
that the inner posts are just slightly different than the, um, than the balusters. And that actually is a good thing because we can control them separately if we need to. And I'll show you one more subtle thing here, which will help you in case you either make a mistake or just have certain geometry. And that is if I make the inner post here, let's just take this from one foot two and whatever that is, I'll just make it one foot three. So it's just gonna be slightly longer, hardly any difference that you can see here. But what that'll do is it will push it up to where these go up to the next step. And of course, there's gonna be some, well, it, it'll probably get off a little bit more as it goes around the arc. Now, one of the reasons why this is um, important is sometimes that you will need to be able to go and edit this and take the bottom down. And I'll just uh, say snap it to that point here. Um, so we can literally snap it to the point. So we can stretch these independent of the balusters. So if, if we have the posts with a similar shape, but with a different uh, length, that can work. Now let me just undo that change and we'll undo it back one more step so that they are more precisely aligned. And as long as it's you know within um, the... Uh, distance that ARCHICAD calculates, then it will rest on the step. So this is probably just a very tiny fraction back from the edge of the um, tread. All right, so let's go on and see how we uh, make this more of the style that Steve has, um, including with the uh, stair treads. So let's go back down here. Um, so in, in terms of getting the stair treads here, and actually let's, let's just uh, clean up the uh, symbol because the symbol just is a little bit of uh, annoying here. Uh, so you can see this is 10 risers and five risers. Really, we don't, this is not uh, two stairs, this is one. So we need to first of all go into this stair here and change the way it's drawn. So I go into the stair settings and I say on the floor plan display, by the way, this may be closed up. You need to open it up um, here. And in the floor plan display, we can say, hey, I don't really need to have another up symbol there. You know, I don't need to repeat it um, when that starts over. I don't even really need the walking line because I'm just going to have it in the lower uh, section there. And I don't need another description. I do want to show the tread structure and I will want to do numbering. And I'll show you how to change it so that the numbers are continuous um, a, a, in a moment. So let's just say OK. And you can see now that's much cleaner instantly. Let's go to the other stair here and look at what we want to do here. So the up down text is should be on, but if I go to the left here, I can specify how I want this to look. So we'll just take this down to a, a much smaller point size and I'm going to make it horizontal. Now, we, readable is horizontal in this case, but if I rotate the stair, then uh, horizontal, in, for my preference, is going to work better. So we'll do that. Um, then I'm going to go to the description. Now, remember that description is saying 10 risers, but actually it's way more than 10. So I need to, I need to go into the description here and say, don't give me the automatic number, which is based on the partial stair. I'm going to do a custom one. So there's all sorts of options here. Let me do custom and we'll just say that this is um, uh, 14 uh, steps, um, 9 inches rise. So you can do 14 treads, whatever, whatever text you want. Let's just make this a small um, size here. And instead of it being rotated like this, we're going to have it um, again, horizontal. So now I've got that. Now the numbering here, you can see the numbers are sort of going around the circle here. So let's go to the numbering and do two things, or a few things. We're going to pull them in from the edge. They, they're going to get in the way of the railing if they're um, all out here. So I'm going to pull them into say 75 percent. So that's three quarters of the way from one side to the other. Uh, I'm going to take them a little further from the riser because I think that'll probably look a little bit better. 
um, here. We'll make the font size is good um, here. We're going to go now and align it. The orientation, instead of rotating it, will again say horizontal. Um, and we want to show it not just on the visible parts below the break line, but also on the hidden parts above the break line. Here, and we'll say OK. And so now you can see the numbers go around. And we have a description that is uh, you know, pretty reasonable. Um, and uh, we can clean up the other one as well. So let's, uh, let me just also say if we wanted to put these, the steps in a different location, we need to edit it. Now I was editing the settings here, but when we go into edit mode, we can go and select individual components. Now in edit mode, normally we go into schematic design where we see the geometry of it, of the 3D model. But if we go into symbol mode, then we can edit the actual way that the symbol is. And if I draw a little selection area, we can see a whole bunch of hot spots here. So this hot spot here allows me to go and, for example, move this into a convenient location there. Um, I can also actually literally move each of the individual steps or change things about the break line. Now the break line here, while we can change some of the geometry of it on plan, if you want to change where it is in terms of how many steps, you need to go to the break mark here. And then you can say the floor plan cut plane height is what we're using, or we put in a custom height, or I like this interesting one, the nth riser. So let's say that I put it on riser number four and say OK. You can see how it jumps around here, or perhaps I take it up to riser number six. Now there seems to be some limits to which ones it'll go to. It won't go too high or too low, but I think you know you can pick something and the walking line will go up to um, this distance. So now I have something that I think uh, works pretty well uh, for this, so we'll exit the edit mode um, here. Now let's see, we wanted to get the numbering for this stair going up um, to match, so we'll go into the settings here. We need to go in to the floor plan display numbering here and say that it's going to start after 10. Now this had nine treads and a tenth um, riser up and we're going to say, let's, let's start it instead of at the first one. Let's start it at the second one so it doesn't overlap there. And it needs to go up. This is the second one, the third one. But oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll set it up to be uh, these three. So actually, we could stop the numbering um, here at number three um, and start this at 10. So. This is where it starts, but we're going to start on the second one here. Again, we'll set it up at 75% and four inches from the edge of the riser. And we're going to set the text settings to be horizontal and say OK. And you can see how there's 10, 11, 12. So the 11, 12 are actually part of this one. Now, if I did want to have step 13 indicated, then I could go in and say that it's going to go up. Um, I could just say, don't stop numbering here. Um, and then it goes up both of these. Or perhaps I say that it's, it stops numbering um, at, instead of number three, we'll say at number four, because that's actually where the tread is. And then if I say edit and go into symbol mode, I can literally go and find the hotspot for the number and put it where I want. So now, depending on what you want, you can say that it starts at number one, goes through 12, and there's one, there's a 13th step there. So you can get the symbol to look exactly the way you want, I would say. Um, now let's go and get a custom tread for this. Now I have copied the elements that Steve had designed uh, over here. So if I were to go to the marquee tool and just say, show me this instead of what we've been looking at, you can see here's, um, here's the tread. And it's made up of a, uh, let's see if I turn off groups here, um, it's made up of a curved wall, a profiled wall here, and 
uh, there's a little piece there, another curved one, and then of course this is a slab. So these are all different pieces um, there. Now I have put these, if I open up this section here, I have a little section marker um, here, and we'll see that here's where the tread is, and I've put it carefully at the top at the zero. That's going to be important because we need to help Archicad understand where the top of this complex form is as far as calculating the treads. So when you design it, you can make whatever shape you want, but it will help if you set it up so that they are um, in that relationship to your origin point. Uh, now, let me go and create a custom tread. I can literally select all of these. Now, by the way, um, let's go in here to the geometry. Uh, this is just an arc, and it represents that column uh, that's the central post. And at first, when I created this, I thought this was the front edge of the tread. And I'll show you what happens when we work with it that way. It will create a tread that looks okay, but doesn't quite align with the stair um, uh, properly. What we need to actually do is to understand that this edge here is where we're measuring and you can see that's a zero degree angle and here's our 30 degree angle um, that uh, is uh, the actual tread. So we've got a nosing at front and back and on the outside of the structural stair uh, there. Um, so let's go and create a custom tread. So I'm going to do it two ways. So I'm going to select these and go to the File menu, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection As, and we'll say a stair tread. And when I do that, it'll say, what do you want to call this? And let's just uh, give it a, a star um, uh, tread one here and save that. Uh, not cross-platform. Okay, so I can't use an asterisk here. Uh, it was a trick that I've used before for, um, let's see, if we, can we do an underscore here? Um, well, actually, let's just, let's just name it tread1 here and say save. And here's this funny little thing on screen. What is it asking me to do? Well, if you look at the status bar, enter stair sub-element coordinate system origin. So that's saying, where is, what's the origin of this sub-element, which is a tread, and it needs to be at the front leading edge of the stair. Now, as I said, this is not correct. We're going to actually need it to be up in this area, but I'll do it from this point. And then it says, what's the x-axis? If you look down there, you can see the, the prompt. So what's the x-axis this way here? And then it saves some of the things about what it was drawn with, as it will with any library creation, and it's now created that tread. So let's look what happens when I use it. It's going to be almost correct, but not quite. So we're going to go back to the this area here and 3D. Um, so we're going to take the the two stairs. Remember, we've got two separate stairs here. We'll go in. And we'll say that we want to take the treads, and instead of using the built-in tread, we use the one that's called tread1. Now, the preview here won't change, but if we do go up to the finish, we will see something. And uh, so it's showing us at least a version of it. We'll say OK. And we'll see very, very quickly that it starts to look more like what we'd expect. However, however if we zoom in on this, and I'll just zoom in here, you can see that this is not quite right. That line here is going into the center and this is gapping there. Why? Because of the geometry as I mentioned earlier. So let's go back and create a, um, uh, a new one. So I'll go and select these again. File, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Stair Tread and we'll just call this Tread two um, here and now I need to have the edge along here and in fact actually I need to I'm just going to cancel this with the escape key because what I'm going to do is use the line tool and figure out where that should be so if I draw a line across to here 
that's the face of it, but I also need to find that center point, and that center point has to be from the end here to the end there. Now, um, that's because this is the full width of the staircase. Uh, so this seems to work very nicely is to take it from, you know, the full width of the staircase and how that fits in. And we have a snap point. So now that I've got that snap point, I can go and select these. File, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as Stair Tread. And we'll call this Tread 2. And then we'll go and find that snap point. Here's that snap point, and then this is the X direction, and we'll say OK. And then let's go and into this area here. We'll take another 3D shot of the stair, and let's now select the two stairs, this lower one and this upper one, and we'll go in and change this from tread 1 to tread 2. That's interesting. When it gets longer, you can't quite see what that is. Tread 2 there. Okay. And so I've selected that. And see, it looks much the same. We'll say okay. But in a moment, you'll see this update. And now this all snugs in beautifully there. So that's how you create a custom tread and make sure that it fits in um, nicely. So now how do we um, create a custom baluster? So the balusters, as we uh, were seeing, are just sim simple posts, but we want to have something more ornate. Um, now, uh, Steve said that uh, the balusters that he was using were just convenient in terms of this particular balustrade object that he uh, had in place. Um, this object here, uh, he said, you know, might might end up being a different baluster, but he said it's it's close enough. So let's just see how we would create a baluster that would was exactly like this. So um, what I've done here is I've taken a section, and we can see here is this short piece of baluster. And I'm going to go and select this. Now, this is selecting the element, and I'm going to copy it. Now, normally you can't copy and paste in this type of um, uh, a, um, view in terms of creating another element. I think the paste, oh, it's interesting. We can paste now. Um, yeah, actually, we can. This is something that was added into um, ARCHICAD, uh, I don't know, maybe 18 or something like that. Uh, so you can, in a section or elevation, do that. But having copied it, I'm going to now go to the uh, Design menu. Let's see, it's going to be under Options. We're going to go to Complex Profiles. Now, it may be in a different place in your ARCHICAD, but Complex Profiles, Profile Manager. And we're going to create a custom profile for the baluster. So here's a custom one. I'm going to say, Edit this. This is a a new custom profile, and I'm going to paste this in. So I just did Command V or Control V and paste it in there. And uh, we'll just drop it into position because I really only want one of these. So I'm going to go in and select all of those and get rid of that, and then select everything and drag this center point. Whoops, um, just drag this center point up onto the origin point here. Now actually, because this is going to be rotated by ARCHICAD, I don't want to have the whole thing. I only want to have one side of it. So I'm going to go and select these. Now it looks like I've selected the whole thing and there may be a polyline in there or some other things, but I can just delete that and you can see how um, it's ended up just on one side. So one way or another you want to uh, do this. Now I'm going to go in and draw a line. Actually, I'll pick up the settings here. We'll draw a line up, straight, snap it into position, and then close it. Now, this is a series of lines, and what I really want for the a profile is a fill. So I'm going to go and uh, magic wand it, and you can see how it's filled this entire space um, with a shape. Now, what is this made of? This is wood, hardwood. Okay, that's all right, but it does have this 
know, extra lines in here if we were to cut through it. Not that that's too important, but I'm going to just switch it to uh, wood trim, no fill. That might work better. And then I'll say override the surfaces. Um, in this case, I want it to be a um, uh, black. And I, let's see, I think we have a paint. Um, here's a paint black. I think that's the one that matches what Steve um, had. So that's going to make this shape black. And we'll go ahead and store this profile as a something that eligible for the railing and we won't be using it for walls so it'll just be a railing and I'll store this and we'll give it a name and I'll just um, call it baluster one here uh, all right well let's see we already have one so let's say baluster 11 so this new profile it'll, will be available when I choose a baluster type. So let's go to the plan and we'll go here, take a look in 3D. And zoom around. So we'll take this railing and go in and here's the baluster. And instead of having a built-in post, we can choose, for example, a revolved post. So when we do a revolved post, we can choose to have an upper part and a lower part and a middle profile. And so here's the baluster 11 that I just created. Now the baluster 11 is going to be, uh, need to, in this case, not have a top and not have a bottom because it already has those included. And we need to make sure that it's the right distance, so it's two inches is the dimension at the base, um, as I recall. And revolved will rotate the whole thing, so it'll be a fully round, lathed form. And I think this overrides uh, what the surface is, so we're going to go and I'll just pick um, this and maybe uh, I think that actually this is not going to be, um, uh, I won't worry about that. I'm just going to take the uh, color and we'll take this down to that paint black, which is what I want. Um, now, this is stretchable because, uh, because I had it set with the stretching. So it will allow this to deform to fit whatever height it needs. So I'll just say OK. And we'll see that update. Now, that one that I selected, I guess that was the inner post that I just changed um, here. Let's go in to the balusters and change that. I, I was thinking that I had the other one. So we're going to go to the uh, revolve post here. And again, we'll say none, um, none. We'll pick the baluster 11. It's going to be revolved rather than a square or some other shape um, here. And uh, we'll give it that. And then we'll go into the uh, 3D representation and choose to make this the black here. So paint, where is it? Paint black there. All right, and I also need to go make sure that you can see how it looks chunky that with the stretching that I specify how wide, because it'll stretch in both directions, vertically as well as possibly getting thick. So I'll say OK. And now we have um, these with balusters that look approximately correct. Let's go in and change the, the upper railing here. I think this uh, needs to be um, we can use this, um, actually, let's just go to the, select the railing. And really, I think this profile here is just fine. We're going to take the uh, surface, though, and give it a material like what Steve was using um, there. And you can see how now it's starting to look 
more correct. Now this extra post we need to um, get rid of and we're going to create a, a custom newel post um, for the base and the top. So I'm going to go in here and edit this and select this one post and say that I'd like to switch this. I could go, um, I could go make it invisible and then it'll disappear. But in this case, I want to replace it with a revolve post. And I'll go in to the revolve post and pick that same baluster um, here and set the same parameters. And we'll go, I think, so there's just so many things that you have to set up. But if you follow this tutorial, you should be in good shape for getting this there and you can save favorites as well. So now we've got um, this working and this um, looks like it's protruding up through here because it was originally a newel post so we need to say that it's going to be three inches down from the top to fit underneath this railing there. Okay so now we have the newel posts at the end and let's just take a look at what this should look like. I mean this isn't too bad it's roughly the same block style as what Steve had, aside from the materials. But let's take a look at this. Ooh, what happened here? Okay, uh, we sometimes have this issue where the um, uh, some of the line work doesn't coordinate with the um, attributes in the file. And so the, the railing here, if I go to um, the railing, if we look at the um, overall thing, we can see the floor plan symbol. And there are some things about the floor plan symbol that uh, we can do globally. So for example, if I go to, I think the, you can see these are repeated, whatever's going on here has to do with the baluster. So when I switched the balusters here and we look at the, the 2D representation, we'll see that there are some funny things going on with the contour line. So let me just put this back to solid lines from this CMU symbolic line there. Um, and we probably also with the inner post, we probably have a similar 2D thing here. And they tend to come up in the hidden lines, I think because at least in the files that I've been working with that have been migrated, uh, Graphisoft added a new line type that they put into the favorites uh, for this. So let's see, that should fix a couple of the issues there. Ah, perfect. So in case you run into that issue on migrated files, you'll now know where to look in the hidden section of either the stairs or railing elements where the line type is being um, selected. Okay, so now in, um, in terms of uh, what we want to do for the baluster, I'm um, for the newel post, let's go back to this um, view that shows his design context. And you'll see in this view how he's got his newel post for the general railings. And it'll take a few seconds to come up because I've got, uh, well, it's a full project. So you can see here um, that the newel post is actually made up of a bunch of separate little pieces. So Steve did some very intricate modeling and then repeated it around um, here. So what I did here, if we go back to the custom baluster work area, is I copied all of this. And so this is, um, if I look at this just by itself in 3D, this is one of those elements. So how would I create this as a custom post? Well, I can do it in either of two ways. Uh, so I'm just going to select all of these things here in 3D. I can also do it in the plan. Go to Libraries and Objects and say Save Selection as a Railing Post. And it says, if I'm doing it in 3D, it says it's going to take the top view. I say OK. Um, and we'll call this um, Newell Post 11 here and it will save all of that environment there. And then if I go to 
the floor plan and we go back to this this area here and look in 3D we can say that I want to edit this here we say edit this and select this post and we're going to change it from the built-in Newell post one here to the one that I just created Newell post 11 and you can see that it very quickly will install that. Now there are a couple of issues with this. One is that I cannot um, actually stretch it. So there won't be any stretch handles that I can work with. Um, and if I go into the settings, it's although it's clean here, there's no controls in the custom settings for changing the height. If I type in anything, it, it won't change because it's essentially a fixed size. So that's okay if you want to create one or two or three or as many different size variations as you need and then install them they will work but the other thing is that there's no 2d representation so if i go to the floor plan um, here uh, you can see that there's no square post up there now th this is the one at the very top of the stairs and right now it's round and we did have a round one here but we're not seeing this at all so let me show you a way where you can um, uh, deal with this. Now it turns out you could go in if you edited the GDL of that part that we just created you could create a symbol for it but I think uh, a simpler thing is to create a stretchable version because it'll automatically uh, work with the the symbolic representation. So let's see how um, that works. So we'll go here and let's just exit the edit mode and we'll again take the open the, the section here and you'll see here is that post now I'm going to go and select all of this copy it and we'll go to a uh, new profile so we're just going to call this um, Newell post 12 here and with this Newell post what we're going to do is uh, just paste in the shape that we've got and drag it in, uh, say, select everything, drag from the center here up to this point. And remember, I want to just have half of it. So one way to do that is to select everything and to split it, say, along this line, get rid of half like that. But actually, I don't even need all of these intermediate things because it's going to be re revolving it or doing it in four sides. So I'm going to go and clean up um, these guys here and those there and these. Now actually I need to, I do need to keep this but not that one because it's going to take this edge here and run it and I just need the outer profile here so again we'll take get rid of these lines um, and you can see that there are some extra lines here you have to be at least careful that you don't delete this um, but I'm going to now um, just draw in a little extra line there to fill that gap and fill that gap in here and I think down at the bottom we have a tiny bit of cleanup here because I removed some lines and then we end up this is the center point here I'm going to go and do that so now this is a continuous uh, shape here and I'm going to go and use the fill tool here to create something we'll do the trim no fill and we'll hit that so this is now a shape this shape I'm going to go and say override the surfaces this is going to be instead of um, the black uh, this is going to be say a, uh, the walnut um, here I think that that'll probably be a good one um, and we'll store this as a railing component here um, so now once I've done that if I go back to the plan and have nothing selected except what's in the marquee 
go to 3D, I can say select the railing and edit it, and then select this post and change it from Newell Post 11 to Revolved Post. So there is no Newell Post 12 here because I have to go into Revolved Post and then pick in the settings of it here. I have to choose the Newell Post 12 that I just created. Um, and that shape here, I'm going to do it as a quadrangle. And so that means it's going to make four sides. Now we want to have nothing as the base in this case, nothing as the top because I already have those shapes. So now this is that shape done, rotated around. We'll take this to um, there and we may, I think we can, um, uh, I'm not sure whether it's going to uh, override this surface. So we'll just take this again as the uh, walnut. Um, let's see. Uh, where is the ones that he was using? The walnut um, horizontal, I think, is the one I want. Uh, or we, maybe we take it as the walnut vertical here. OK, so we'll say OK. And we'll see this now come up. So it looks like what you'd expect. Now the nice thing about this, um, or one of the nice things, is that I can then, if I need to, um, stretch this. So I think I can go and stretch this up to some whatever height I want um, here, and if necessary, um, stretch it down as well to, to the floor level. Now you notice that it's deformed a bit, um, it's stretched uh, here, so if you wanted to have it uh, more precise in terms of the proportions or the, the lengths of things, then you'd want to create more than one of these profiles. But the fact is that it, it is stretchable. You can get a, a basic shape here. And if we go um, to the plan, you can see that it's got a symbol. Now in this case, the symbol is not what we want. So how would you change this to be a rectangular shape? Well, you go in here and we're still in the edit mode. So with the edit mode, I can go and select, for example, if I hit the tab key, the posts, or this is the big post here that I've got selected. And I can go in and say that the 2D representation, instead of being round, is going to be a square. And oh, look at this, all of these funny lines here that seem to be defaults based on a mismatch between the um, uh, Graphisoft default elements and the um, ones that uh, are in this project. Now, by the way, look at these numbers. This is odd. This is how much above the railing it's going. The, it's a negative number because it's actually going above. And this is, of course, going down below the tread to the floor at the nine inch level. We say OK. Um, so obviously, we could also do something at the top uh, with that one. Uh, as well. But let's take a look at how this um, new railing looks. I think we're pretty much um, done. If I say exit the edit mode, this is now a, uh, well, let's, let's go and fix that one, that one at the top. Um, and then we'll put it into place and see how it looks. So we'll go in here, um, select the, to edit it, go and select this, say that we're going to Actually, we'll just go into the settings where we have more control and say that we'll make it a revolved post. Actually, let's tell you what, let's, let's look at the favorites. So we're going to go here and say that this element here, we're going to save it as a favorite. So I'll say make a favorite. We'll do a plus and we'll call this um, Newell, Newell Post 12 here. So that's now a favorite, and um, we can save that. And now I can go up to this one here and say that I'd like to change it from this one here to the Newell Post 12. And you see it should work here. Uh, for some reason, that favorite didn't pick that up. So that's actually incomplete for the favorite. We're going to do this as a quadrangle there. And yeah, it did not 
pick up all of those things um, here. So that's a little disappointing here, but uh, let's just work with work with this and get the settings here for walnut vertical here and looks like it is set to go to stretch more than it needs to so we'll just snap this up to the tread here and oh and also it looks like the the size because I had it stretchable I need to go in and say that the this is four inches so um, I think that's closer to what it should be there um, okay so now now these look pretty similar obviously there may be some slight differences there so uh, let's exit this and let's put this into place and see what it looks like in place of the other element now um, I'm going to do uh, oh, and we'll just go and see if I can uh, fix that little symbol there go in and edit this here hover over that um, and hit the tab key until it selects that post and we'll go to the 2d representation make it like this and I don't really want to have a fill here so it may be one of these background pens here that we can do all right so now we have that working there now I'm going to select um, everything that's in here so we'll just do command a this will select everything that's in here and we're going to group it and I'm also going to open up the renovation palette and I'm going to say that all of these elements here are going to be new they disappear temporarily because I'm showing the existing plan but if I say show the plan status then you can see how they come up or if I say show all, then it'll show that there. Um, so let's leave it with show all and we'll go and put this into position. So I'm going to take um, these guys, take with groups active, select everything here and we'll copy it. And I'm going to paste it in to the this place over here. So in order to paste it in, in the right place, I just need to make sure I have the origin point here. And I'm going to actually turn off the existing elements. I've actually, I think I've gone in and, and made these guys here um, demo so that they're going to disappear when I say planned status. And so I'll just paste in to the current view these elements and we'll just align them carefully I'll find the center point here and move it to there so now this is lined up there now the step one isn't here the step one should be down in this area so I need to select this whole thing and I've still got groups active so let's just rotate this around here and it's going to be minus 75 degrees there and you can see how by having the uh, the numbering horizontal etc this is now working uh, well the way it needs to this is Steve's original uh, text and here's our um, revised version so now if I go to the close-up view this is the original close-up view this is going to um, take a look at the stair with the original elements and then we're going to switch to the one with the new stair and see how close that is so here's the original ones and you can see again this is you know the, the funny thing here and now I've got the uh, new stair which has been rotated into position 
So I hope you enjoyed this Archicad video tutorial. I know it was rather elaborate and lengthy, but I think uh, it covered a lot of very important things about working with stairs and railings and matching and building up something uh, to suit a particular design context. Please post comments or questions down below this video, wherever you see it posted on my website or on YouTube. If you'd like to become a master of Archicad stairs and railings, I invite you to join me for my new Archicad stairs and railings course. You'll see information on the notes around this video, and you can also go and find out more and sign up at bobro.com forward slash stairs. It's been my pleasure to share this with you. Look forward to hearing your feedback and I wish you the best in your Archicad journey towards mastery. This has been Eric Bobro. Thanks for watching.